As this video begins, I know you're already thinking, your desk is incredibly messy. Well, you could be correct, but that's not what this video is about. What I want you to focus on is this, a rather sharp nail that happens to be sitting right here on the center of my desk. And what I'm actually going to do is attempt to set a balloon on top of that nail. Now, it's going to be kind of difficult by myself because I'm my own cameraman. So I'm going to set this balloon up here, and I'm going to then set a board on top of it to try and hold it in place. So here comes the balloon on top of the nail, trying to hold the nail from wobbling. Who made my nail wobble? Guess we'll just have to stick a new hole. You can tell it's not the first time. So let's create another new hole right here. So there we go. This this is a very, oh yeah, we've got a nail that means business. So here we go. We will take the object. We'll just set right down. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, uh, uh. And I am attempting to release the pressure onto the balloon. Ah! It scares me like a little girl. Okay. Uh-oh. Hey, I told you it's a sharp nail. Get Turn loose of that. So now... For my next feat of magic, here we go. We will now attempt, just ignore the dead balloon bits on there. We will now attempt to put on a few more. Hey, get that out of there. There we go. We will now attempt a few more razor sharp nails. And they are quite sharp, I promise you that. Thank you, Flynn Scientific. But anyway, let's see what we can do. So another balloon, and we'll go ahead and set it on there and see if it'll stay. A little stack of electricity getting drawn to me. So there's my other balloon, and I will take, I'm going to attempt to do the same thing. I'm going to lay this block on, and you can see exactly what I'm doing here. I may have to, again, be my own cameraman. And voila. Now, wait a second. Let's, let's increase the odds. There's 1.1 pound of weight. Uh, 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 what? No. Oh, uh, wait a second. Let's go for, this would be 2.2 .2 pounds of weight. Uh huh. A little wobbly, but lo and behold, this nail stands. One more. 3.3 .3 pounds of weight. All right. You can notice that this balloon is sitting on top of these nails, but the balloon is not popping. Now, something tells me if I take this one, one nail from the side, though, it will change everything. I don't want to pop it. Don't make me. Obviously, things have changed in this problem. We can take the, the pressure. Oh, we can take the pressure off. Now, part of me does feel compelled. But just how much can I take my hand and squeeze this balloon? Squeezy, squeezy, squeezy. Uh, oh, isn't the pressure just killing you? It's about to kill me. Oh my goodness. I don't know if you can tell this, but I'm pushing. Ah! <laughs> Pressure! It took a tremendous amount of force. Uh oh, I keep saying these words force, pressure. It took a lot of force to actually bust my little balloon. I'm going to see if I can't get back down here on my paper a little bit. Chances of me getting my video camera right again. Hopefully, hopefully that's somewhere in the ballpark. What is pressure then? Pressure is force per unit area. So pressure is nothing but pressure, big capital P, is equal to force divided by area is all it is. So what was the difference with the two nails? I had the bed of nails versus the nail. So what was the overwhelming difference here? Well, when I had one nail, you had all the weight on one tip of one nail head. What changed? Well, when you've got the bed of nails, you've distributed the weight over all these nail heads. Y'all look at the equation. Pressure and acceler acceleration. Pressure and area are inverse to each other. 
So if area goes up, that means pressure must come down. So by having more heads of more nails, we distribute the weight out over a larger area and therefore reduce the pressure being exerted on the balloons. So there's where these problems kind of come into. So working these problems is easy. The only thing I can tell you, you might end up doing a lot, a lot of these problems, force is going to be weight. So if you work a problem and it's, you know, sitting down or gives you a mass, there's a good chance you're going to use that mass, do W equals mg, find that weight, substitute it for force, area, about the only two problems you're going to see is stuff like this. Rectangular objects where you'll just do like a length times a width, and you will see some round objects, and you'll use power square for your areas in there. Now, watch out specifically, a lot of problems will try and give you like a chair leaning back on two legs. And they'll be like, okay, so here's like one chair, and here's its leg. Well, the chair has, and it'll say, two legs. Well, you've got a pi r square to represent the area, but if you've got two legs, make sure you notice and times your area by two, and that's the area that you'll use in the problem. And if it said a 40 kilogram man was sitting in this chair, propped on two legs, well, just 40 times 9.8 and then you would have your force to go in up on top of it. So there's kind of where we're getting at in these problems. I'm just going to do one example of these problems. So you got a little idea of like what a basic pressure problem looks like. So here's a question. It's a waterbed question. And it comes into this problem, and it tells you that this waterbed, let's see, a waterbed is two meters on a side. So here's your waterbed sitting on the ground. So here's my waterbed. I'm going to draw me a little waterbed here. It's a square waterbed, at least on the bottom. And then we'll come back. To, to, don't be jealous. Two meters, two meters. It says it's two meters per side. Now, it says that it is also 30 centimeters in depth. So it gives us that little bit of information. First thing the problem does, it says find how much the waterbed weighs. So what is the weight of this waterbed? Well, if I want to find weight, it sure would be nice, W equals mg, to know the mass of that waterbed. Well, it didn't give me the mass of the waterbed, but look at what it gave you. It gave you length, width, and height. What can you find with length, width, and height? Well, volume is length, width, and height. So all we've got to do is plug in and get this volume, 2 times 2 times 30 centimeters, which would be 0.3. Hey, let's not use a calculator. What's 2 times 2 times 3? 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 3 is 12. But now check it out. That's really 0.3, which is the same as 3 over 10. So this answer is 12 over 10, so the answer is 1.2. Some of you may have AP exams. So you need to get used to working with... Uh, numbers a little better. If you ever have a point something like this, just say, change it to like something tense and then usually your math gets easier. So now this is going to be meters cubed for a unit. The thing is, this is a water bed. It's full of water. Well, what I know about water is I know it's density. The density of water is a thousand kilograms per meter cubed. And this is my little row for density here. So I know the density of water. Well, density is equal to mass divided by volume. So this would be 1,000 equals m over 1.2. Well, a little multiplication, and it looks like we've got 1, 2, 0, 0 kilograms of water, which, by the way, is a tremendous amount of water at this point. So... Now we've got the mass of this water, which means if you want to find out how much this waterbed weighs, all we got to do is mg. So 1,200 kilograms times 9.8 for our gravity. Turn to my TI for this. 1,200 times 9.8. It's going to be 11,000 and something. 11,760. So 11,000. 760 newtons. 
That is a tremendous amount of weight in this problem. So we've got our weight, and now let's take a look at what, what part B asks. Assume, find the pressure, whoops, I'm not down far enough, find the pressure under the waterbed. So it just says, find the pressure this waterbed exerts on the floor. Well, if I want to find the pressure of the waterbed on the floor, pressure is equal to force divided by area. Well, it's like a lot of problems I've already told you. The weight is going to be my force. So this weight is my force. So 11,760. And now what else have we got? The area of the waterbed. Well, the area is the part that's on the floor, which would be 2 by 2. Hey, you got to love that. That's an area of 4 meters square. So let's take a look. Now I want you to know this. I don't write units a lot, but I wrote these units down. So 11,760 divided by 4 equals 2,940. And now the question should be, what unit do we use? Well, it's right here. It's a newton per meter square. And there is the answer to our problem, 2,940 newtons per meter square. Now I want to add like two more things into this video. One is going to be units. Uh, a newton per meter square also has another name. You could have answered this problem like this, PA, 2,940 PA. A newton meter square is the same thing as a Pascal, named after a French doctor, if I believe correctly, that, who did experiments with pressure. So that's where this Pascal comes into. Now this is the part that gets kind of nasty. This is not the only unit, Pascal, Newton per meter square. Uh, there are other units. One of the most common is what's known as an atmosphere, which is given ATM. You will have problems with an atmosphere. It looks like this, 101, 325. There's your conversion factor if you need it for that. Uh, I'm going to sit here and actually take a second away from my video. We could solve it, but PSI to Pascal's. See if I can get a conversion factor here uh, without having to solve it. And lo and behold, one PSI, I got it. Because a very common thing is a PSI. And I'm going to trust Google that they're correct. 6,895 PAs per one PSI, pound per square inch, because that's pretty common, and we can convert it, and if you want me to, I can do it. There'll be a whole other video. Then let's see, the other other problems, uh, let's see, what the, oh, check this out. An ATM is also equal to, check this one, 760 millimeters of mercury, another way of measuring air pressure. So we've got different units. Uh, most of the problems you work are pretty much, only in chemistry will use this 760. In physics though, don't be surprised if you're asked to work around ATMs or PAs or PSIs or even Newton per meter squares, which is no big deal since it is the same as a PA. But anyway, good luck on getting started with some of those pressure questions. Most of them are pretty easy. They're just P equals F over A. It might give you A and P, and then you got to find F. And then if it says something about mass, that force is probably your weight, and you can W equals MG and find your mass. But anyway, that'll get you started. Bye-bye.